So in this video I'm going to talk about PCB design. Now this is something you can do quite easily yourself these days, it's really easy to do. It is a bit of a learning curve at times trying to get into these things. The software is out there now, quite easy to use and they are fairly straightforward and you don't really have to be taught that much. You can also benefit from using things like Google or YouTube especially. We can actually look at tutorials people have done on how to do certain things in the software and there's a lot of support out there already for the software. So this particular example here, this is Eagle. This is an old version of Eagle. I'm using 7.6 which is ancient now. This is what I use because I don't want to pay a monthly fee or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm tight like that. This is the free version. <laughs> so, but there's also other versions like this KiCad or KeyCad, how you want to pronounce it. Um, I've also got that. I've used both. So in this particular one, I'm just showing you an example of something I've recently designed. This is, in theory, a constant current source. Haven't even built up a demo circuit yet, haven't even tried it out. I'd have sat down, drew it out, I thought, right, this will probably work, and I've actually ordered the PCBs. So I'm going to cover that as well in a video about ordering the PCBs as well and covering that side of it. Basically, you come in here, you can select a part. You can choose whatever parts you want from this list, which is a bit big for this window. There you go, bring this up a bit. So you want a resistor or whatever, it's it's in this. You can import stuff as well. You can use libraries from other sites like you can go on Google and you can find support for various library types. You know, if you want a particular device which isn't already in here, you can usually find an Eagle library for it. It's quite common. Yeah, you've got different resistors and all sorts of stuff in here. Loads and loads of stuff. And there's things here which I've added. I've used, you can even make your own footprints and your own devices. It takes a bit more effort and a bit more skill. I've done it myself, but I don't remember how now, it's a while ago. But I've done it, you can actually make your own footprints and your own devices and, and so you can import your own things. Let's look for the ESP32. This is one I've generated, ESP32. So I just made the same footprint. I, I made this. It's not that hard. Um, but it's basically you pick a device, come in and you click on it. If you want to use multiple ones of the same one, you click over here and do a copy command. And so if you want to copy that, you can make another one over there like that. There you go. Um, Turn it back off again, don't want that. You basically put the parts, you wire them all together using this tool, link them all together on the schematic. There's other ways you can do it, you also use labels and allocating nets. Depends on the complexity of this circuit, I've done both methods. If it's a simple circuit like this, I just draw them out because it's easy enough to follow. It's actually easier than trying to use nets and having it all basically hit them. If you've got a more complex circuit, let's do this one. This is a bit more complex. No, that's saving it unchangingly. So this one is using nets instead. So you can see there's no wires, basically. Very few anyway, there's a few here. Um, but basically it's all using nets instead. So instead of having physical connections shown in the diagram, you just put labels on there and, and join the networks together. That way it's much easier to follow. Otherwise be things going everywhere on this diagram. That's what the actual layout looks like on that particular device. So let's go back. So this bit around the outside here, that is used to create a copper fill. So basically you use a polygon, which is this thing over here. And you basically draw a shape around the circuit board, the, the edge extremities. And then you allocate that as a zero volt ground plane, for example. And so tie that to your zero volt net. And that will then become a copper fill. So if I click on this, it will refresh it and copper fill it. There we go. And I've got that on both sides of the board, top of layer and bottom layer. So that's just an example in Eagle. Now in KiCad, or KiCad, however you want to pronounce it, it's up to you. I've also used it. So I've done a few things in here, a couple of projects, mainly because of the free version of Eagle is limited to PCB size, and sometimes you need a bigger PCB. I find Eagle easy to use, but then it's because I've used it more, I think. KiCad's okay. So this is a circuit diagram. It's been very similar to the Eagle setup, where you can use labels and nets to link, to link everything together. Okay, so this is that version of the board. And if I want to look at the PCB, and there's the PCB itself. Alright, so it's the layout. So you can zoom in and get really, really close and see wires and stuff like that in here. These are basically seven segment displays. And I've got some bits over here as well. What I don't like is the way it zooms. <laughs> anyway, it jumps when you zoom. You get used to it, I suppose. but individual footprints for SMD parts over here. I think if you're going to be starting new in PCBs now, if you're going to be you know doing it now and learning it, I'd say go with KiCad, KiCad, right? Use that one. It's a bit of a steeper learning curve, but it's got some better features. It's got like 3D viewing and all sorts of things like that. 
I think this is the better way to go. And it's free, whereas the uh, Eagle version is no longer free, I believe. Could be wrong on that, but I believe it's no longer free. Yeah, if you're starting out, I'd say try KiCad out, KiCad, how you want to pronounce it, and use that one. There's also lots of tutorials about this software. This is, I think, one of the first boards I made in KiCad, actually, this one. But it works in a different way to Eagle. So it's basically got separate modules, and you load the module up, and you have to import your file data into that module. So like, this circuit diagram is one module, and then you have to kind of import this into the PCB module, and then you can build the PCB with it, and that sort of stuff. So it's a bit more complicated in that way. I'm not sure if the newer versions are different. This is, again, a slightly older version because I'm using an older system. They have to export the PCB from this. You have to export files. I'm not going to cover that because that's something you need to learn me do tutorials because it's a bit more involved. Eagle is a bit more involved. You have to set up a Gerber export and stuff like that. This will have a similar sort of thing, exporting Gerbers. Here's the Gerbers over here. It's done export of those ones. That's what GBR means. See you next video where I cover getting one made. The next video will be about making a PCB, as in getting it manufactured.